Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to answer diagram labelling questions. Many candidates dread getting this type of question in their reading test because they fear they won't understand the diagram, especially if it's on a technical subject. But there's no need to worry, as you don't need to fully understand it. Simply use the information given just as you do with every other type of question, and I'm about to show you how. Here's what we'll be covering. An explanation of this question type, an outline of the skills you'll need, some key tips, a strategy for answering diagram labelling questions, and an example from a real test paper. First, let's look at what you have to do for this type of question. You will be given a diagram or a plan, and you are required to label specific parts with words from the text or from a word list. The diagram will be one of the following. A design or plan, a technical drawing, for example a machine or an invention, or a diagram of something in the natural world. If you are required to select words from the text for the answer, the instructions will state how many words you are allowed to use for each label. For example, one word, or no more than two words. Hyphenated words such as mother-in-law count as one word. If you use the wrong number of words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you have given is correct. So, read the instructions carefully. We're now ready to look at a sample question. This set of instructions is taken from a past test paper. We'll be completing the question step by step in a minute. You'll notice that for this particular question, you're given a list of words with which to label the diagram. The information needed to label it correctly will be in the text, although it may be concealed in synonyms and paraphrasing. This type of question is designed to test your ability to do several different things. To interpret a diagram, scan for specific information, identify synonyms and paraphrasing, and read in detail for meaning. All but the first skill, interpreting a diagram, are skills you'll use in most of the other types of reading questions. If you need help to develop them, You'll find tips and lessons on my website, ieltsjackie.com, and in other videos on my YouTube channel. There's a link to the website in the notes below this video. Now for some key tips. Tip 1. Diagram labelling questions are not as hard as they may at first seem. If you apply the step-by-step -step strategy I'm about to explain, you should be able to master them. Tip 2. Don't panic if the diagram looks complicated. It won't be. A diagram is just another way of presenting information. A combination of language and a drawing. You need no prior knowledge of the subject in order to complete them. Remember, this is a test of your reading skills, nothing else. Again, just follow the strategy. Tip 3. Use any little clues present in the diagram to help you understand it. In our diagram, for example, we have some numbers, some text, one completed label, and a heading in the word list box. Each gives us important information about the topic and would be related to the answers in some way. I'll show you how to interpret it in a minute. Tip 4. You may be given a glossary of key words that could be unfamiliar to you. They'll be below the text. Here's the glossary for this question. First, dung, which means the droppings or excreta of animals. And second, cowpats, which means the droppings of cows. Tip 5. Try to get a general understanding of the diagram before you read the text. Tip 6. Scan for keywords in the text to locate the paragraph with the answer in them, then read in detail 
to identify the word or words needed for the label. Tip 7. The information in the text that contains the answer will very likely include synonyms, so be on the lookout for them. And finally, tip 8. If you're struggling with a particular label, move on. Grab the easiest marks first and come back to relook at the others later if there's time left at the end. Make an educated guess if you have to, rather than leaving the answer blank. You may guess correctly and score the point. If you're choosing words from a word list, it will be easier to determine the answer when you've eliminated some of the other words. Now we come to the strategy for answering diagram labelling questions. I'll go through it quickly, then show you how to use it step by step. First, read the instructions carefully. Find out whether you have to label a diagram with words from the text or from a word list. If the words come from the text, note how many you're required to write. For example, one word, or no more than two words. Second, briefly look at the diagram and try to get a general understanding of what it's showing. There will be clues in headings, figures and any labels already added. Next, scan the text for key words. This will identify where the answers are located. Then, read the relevant section of text in detail to find each answer. And finally, fill in the answer sheet and check your spelling. Now for our practice question. This question is from a past IELTS reading test paper. You've already seen the instructions a couple of times, but here they are again. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, I've created PDFs of both the instructions and diagram and the text that you can download to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to them in the notes below this video. Do note that only part of the text is shown in this practice question. The passage in your test will be longer and have other questions set on it as well. Here's the text. Don't read it yet. Remember, you need to do some work on the statements first. We'll come back to the text in a minute. So this is how I'd answer the question my step-by-step -step strategy. I start by carefully reading the instructions to be sure that I know what I have to do. Next, I study the information on the diagram to understand what the diagram is about and to work out the sort of information I'll need to find out in order to label it correctly. These are the points that I note. The instructions say that I have to label three tunnels numbered 6, 7 and 8. Each label is a type of dung beetle from the word list. The only difference between the tunnels is their depth, which is shown by the scale 0 to 30 on the left side of the diagram. I conclude that I will identify the correct answers by finding out how deep the different types of dung beetle dig their respective tunnels. Knowing this information, I decide to scan the text for the numbers. They're actually measurements. 0 cm, 10 cm, 20 cm and 30 cm. They should be easy to find and will lead me to the answers. I'm mindful that they could be written in words, so watch out for this. I find sentences with 20 cm and 30 cm in, and I read them in detail. Some large species, originating from France, excavate tunnels to a depth of approximately 30 cm below the dung pat. South African beetles dig narrow tunnels of approximately 20 cm below the surface of the pat. The first sentence I've identified clearly states that the dung beetle that digs tunnels 30 cm deep comes from France. I check the word list and find French, which means comes from France, among the possible labels. I then look at the diagram to identify which label relates to the 30 cm deep tunnel. It's label 7, so the answer must be 7, 
French. I fill in the answer and cross through French in the word list. Here we have a good example of how synonyms are used in this type of question. Knowing these words and their synonyms will help you to understand and match the information. Species means the kind or type of something. Originating means comes from. And excavate means to dig. However, as long as you find 30 centimetres and the word French in the text, you should be able to get the answer. I move on to the second sentence that I've identified in the text. South African beetles dig narrow tunnels of approximately 20 centimetres below the surface of the pat. The answer seems clear. It's a South African beetle that digs tunnels 20 centimetres deep. I check the word list for South African, but find two different types, South African beetle and the South African ball roller beetle. I read the paragraph in detail for more information, particularly looking out for the words ball roller or something similar. I find the information I need in the next sentence. Some surface dwelling beetles, including a South African species, cut perfectly shaped balls from the pat, which are rolled away and attached to the bases of plants. Here I learn that the South African ball roller beetle attaches the balls of dung to the base of plants and doesn't dig tunnels. This then is not the answer. So the answer must be 6 South African. I fill it in, cross through South African in the word list and move on to the final label. I now need to find out which beetle digs a tunnel of about 10 centimetres deep. However, 10 centimetres isn't mentioned in the text, so I decide to scan for the remaining types of beetle, Spanish, Mediterranean and Australian native, to find the answer by a process of elimination. I start by scanning for Spanish and quickly find the following sentence in the third paragraph. The shallowest tunnels belong to a much smaller Spanish species that buries dung in chambers that hang like fruit from the branches of a pear tree. The shallowest, meaning less deep than the rest, tells me that this could be the answer, but I scan for the Mediterranean and Australian native as well, just to be sure. Neither of these types of beetle is mentioned in the text, so the answer must be 8. Spanish. We've now found all three labels, so the question is complete. I hope you found these step-by-step -step instructions helpful. Thanks for watching and I look forward to helping you with another of the 12 types of reading questions soon. Bye for now.